ANSI art and alt codes in payloads, this time on Hack 5. Hello, welcome to Hack 5. My name is Darren Kitchen. It's your weekly dose of techno lust, and I'm so excited because this week we're taking something that's really old and then we're making it new and we're gonna have a lot of fun and learn something about alt codes because that was the subject matter of a comment from Crack Ruckles a few weeks ago who pointed out that hey, one might just spam Alt-255 on a Windows machine, which adds a blank Unicode character. And I took the bait. I love this as an inspiration for a payload here because, yes, kind of, sort of. And if you don't know what that means, don't worry. You're going to by the end of this, and you're going to make brilliant ASCII, ANSI art to your heart's content. Here's the thing. Alt codes. This goes way back. Uh, previous even to, well, it's been part of the IBM PC for such a long time, and it's it's what enables you to create, you know, uh, all of these beautiful ASCII and even ANSI, which we'll get to, characters using the number pad. And this is a very weird thing if you've never used this, uh, but what you can do is on your keyboard, you hold down Alt, and then on the number pad, you can type in like say 176 and then let go of Alt, or 177, or 178, 179, right? And you get these various different characters, and they're all part of the ASCII character set. ASCII standing for the American Standard Code for Information Interchange. There you go. Now you know something. Um, this stuff goes way back. 1963, it first debuted in a product by AT&T, a teletype. And then later in 1968, President Lyndon B. Johnson mandated that all computers sold to the federal government were going to have to speak ASCII. So it became a standard. Well, it was a standard, but it became very prominent. And it, in fact, it was the most common character set being used until 2007 when uh, UTF-8 took over in popularity and of course UTF-8 is in fact backwards compatible with ASCII and it's also what brought us emoji which is a lot of fun. We'll probably do some emoji stuff later. Uh, but I just wanted to point all of that out because I want you to now see this in practice. Let's go ahead and take a quick little look. So if we hop onto our bunny box over here, pun intended, and open up a command prompt, I'm holding down Alt and I'll hit Alt-176 and let go, and, and you get this little character, and you're like, what is that, right? Let me start with the uh, non-extended stuff. Say Alt-065, 066, 067, 068, 069. You can kind of see where this is going. Those are the uppercase. You can also do uh, 122, 123, uh, that's 212, let's see, 124, 125, you know, and that kind of gives you an idea. Those right there are all of the characters that you can type just on your keyboard, you know, like A through Z, one through zero, uh, S, uh, pound, at, dollar, paren, all of that stuff, right? And those are your standard ASCII character sets, the 128 characters uh, that are represented in seven bits. So you've got 0 through 127, or 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0 in binary through 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1 in binary. Doesn't matter. Point is very small, super simple, and gets you the basics. But there's actually an extended character set to ASCII, which is the heart of what made up this beautiful medium called ANSI art. And you know, here's here's the thing. It was such a huge part of like hacking culture and 1980s and 1990s BBS scene where, where I cut my teeth as a hacker. And I could wax on poetically about this for hours because I have like a lot of nostalgia in my heart for the dial up. Uh, so maybe that could be a topic for another time. But suffice it to say, ANSI is amazing and you can even still use this today because UTF-8, even though it's taken over, is backwards compatible with all this good stuff and you can do really cool, fun things with it. So just as I showed you, you can use alt codes to do the standard ASCII stuff, 0 through 127. You can also do anything 128 through 255 and get some really cool characters. You've probably seen these before. You've seen like really old computer systems. They were used a lot of times to create menus. So going back to our bunny box, we'll see as an example, if we look at the codes 187, you know, 191, I don't know. I'm just picking numbers here, but uh, the ones 179 through 218 were great for creating these like single and, and double lined um, menus. You also had some big blocky characters, 219 through 223. I'll link to a table. And you even have gradients, 
gradients. You could do really cool shading. And actually, when you get into you know EGA uh, 16 color and the ability to have both a background color and a foreground color, there was amazing art that could be done. We're not going to get into that whole rabbit hole right now. We should totally go down that rabbit hole another time. But today on the bunny, we're going to be utilizing this to have a lot of fun. Uh, so what I wanted to point out and to answer Crack Crackle's point is that yes, you can actually use this stuff in your Bash Bunny payloads because we implemented alt codes back in uh, Bash Bunny firmware version 1.5, which is the latest at time of recording. And if you haven't already seen, you can actually just go over to downloads.hack5.org. Uh, and uh, let's see, Bash Bunny, and you'll see all the firmware and everything, and there's there's always a change log, and so you can actually go through these change logs and see like, oh cool, what features were added and, and all of those things. So in version 1.5, uh, let's see, auto ethernet was added as well as alt codes. So for instance, quack alt code 168, that's gonna get you an upside down question mark, um, all sorts of fun stuff there. So if you did uh, say quack, I know I'm not on a, on a bunny right now, but quack, alt code and then I don't know let's pick one um, 227 that would get you oops <laughs> numlock wasn't on 227 that would get you a pi symbol which looks like 227 boom and next thing you know you're Sandra Bullock and you're running from all sorts of drug lords it's good stuff now one of the fun things I've done here on my Linux box is I've gone ahead and created a file 1.txt and that is a beautiful ANSI art of a Hack5 logo and I think it looks pretty good considering it's kind of low bit, right? And you'll see where I'm going with this is what I'd like to do is now take this beautiful Hack5 ANSI art logo and turn it into a ducky script because why not? And let's go ahead and do exactly that the fun way. So I've already started that if I cat2.txt and you'll see kind of where I'm going here. I've put the carriage returns between these and you know, I have my logo, but of course I can't just quack these, they're alt codes. So what we'll need to do is finesse this a little bit. So I thought this would be a fun opportunity to just throw in a little said foo. And you'll kind of see where I'm going with this. I'm going to just pipe this to said attack E and I'm going to replace something. So S slash what you want to replace slash what you want to replace it with slash G and then it'll put that in its place. So as an example, if I just go ahead and grab that character there and say copy and then we'll paste it here. Okay, this will say replace all of those with, I don't know, periods, right? And you can see huzzah, now we've replaced them all with periods. So continuing on with that example, what I've gone ahead and done is I now have this said line, which gives you whatever you'd like, right? So I've replaced them with pounds and percentage signs. Okay, well taking that a step further, and you can kind of get an idea of where this is going now, we're gonna go ahead and use this said line, which is actually going to add quack alt code 176, and then this backslash n represents a carriage return, and so that's gonna replace all of these with its corresponding alt code character. And we're gonna do the same thing with you know, the, the, that one with alt code 178 and, and so on and so forth. So what we end up with is this beautiful bit of uh, code here. So let's hop on over to our Windows box where we already have our Bash Bunny plugged in in arming mode and turn this into a payload. Now I've already gone ahead and done that and I will link in the description to where you can grab this payload for yourself. But you can see we just, as before, LED setup, set our attack mode to hid and then put our LED into attack. We're not really attacking, but whatever. And we're gonna go ahead and open up Windows R, uh, the dialog, and we're gonna send it cmd slash k copycon ansi.txt ampersand uh, exit. And so what that does is says uh, cmd Hack K for keep the dialog and then copycon uh, ansi.txt. Now copycon, if you're not familiar, just lets you type right into the console and then when you hit control Z, boom, you now have a new file. So if we actually cat that ansi.txt file, not cat, type that ansi.txt file, there you go. Let's go ahead and delete that and let's go ahead and give this a payload a shot because you can already get an idea of where it's gonna go with this. And in switch position one, let's own this box.
And yes, your eyes are not deceiving you. This is, in fact, how quickly it's typing in all of those alt codes. It is, in fact, holding down the alt key and typing those in. So it's many characters. And this is beautiful because it actually emulates basically what it looked like in the 80s on a 1200 baud modem. So uphill, both ways, in the snow. I feel like at some point I need to tell you to get off my lawn or something to that effect. Uh, but yeah, let's just be grateful that we're not there anymore. So there you go, alt codes and ANSI art all in one payload, beautifully illustrating how bad the 80s was with 1200 baud modems, but the reality could be yours, and I would love to see what kind of creativity we can come up with, and we'll do just that in a bit with our Hack5 Gear giveaway, but first, let's thank our sponsor. Domain.com has all of your website needs from .com and .net to intuitive website builders. Create your online identity with their affordable, reliable tools. Even brand yourself with over 300 extensions from .club to .space. Domain.com loves Hack5, which is why you get 15% off domain names, hosting, and email when you check out with coupon code HACK5. When you think domain names, think domain.com. Now, mad props to Crack Ruckles for inspiring this payload with the comment, and you're going to be receiving yourself a $100 Hack 5 gift card so you can get yourself a Wi-Fi pineapple or a land turtle or a packet squirrel or any of the awesome Hack 5 gear over at hak5.org. If you'd like to get yourself some hacker hardware and through winning this gear contest, go ahead and enter. I think this week what I'd really love to see is creative uses of alt codes in payloads. In fact, I'll even issue a challenge that I would love to see an interpreter, a compiler, a converter that would take beautiful ANSI art and turn it into what we just did there, uh, payloadifying it, if you will. And you will find full links to all of the uh, contest rules in the descriptions, as well as link to this particular payload. And I'm very excited with the creativity that the community has just, like, there's so much more than I have had a chance to cover. Uh, lots of cool stuff coming soon. I will see you guys next week. Until then, I'm Darren Kitchen. Trust your technolust. <laughs>